Good morning. Just unloading over here. Back in Grand Forks again. Grabbed our load and delivering. Just uh, one by fours over here uh, in a nursery. Can't remember what it's called. So today's video is going to be just a continuation of uh, where we left off in yesterday's video up at uh, Paulson Summit or else I'll just shoot the same video again with with these trailers being problematic it's better to just do some of these short runs first before doing one to Vancouver so yeah just I'm un unloading over here So when we start the clip on top of Paulson, you'll see some black lines on the road. Keep an eye out for those. I did that. See the black lines? That's all me. Remember I was talking about yesterday? It's like, huh, that's the um the uh, tire max system leaking air. That's the one that makes sure the tires stay inflated. And then it stopped. By the time I came back, it's like it just stopped. I'm like, okay. So everything looked good, so I jumped in and started going, and I'm like, oh, blue smoke. We're not good. So I pulled over to the side there and actually just turned off the tire max system. So now nothing is keeping those tires inflated exactly equal. It's just the old school old school trailer without a tire max system that keeps keeps the tires inflated it just just no issues with it off other than it's not auto auto inflating those tires and uh, then now it's been working since then it hasn't locked up so there's definitely a valve a valve broke in there that's stuck in the open position that's just draining all the air. But I figured it out, turned it off, it's now on the repair list. It's not a super high priority. down to Klesnikov. Loaded there. Delivered in Grand Forks and now we're gonna go load another load. Should be able to get it loaded here today and deliver that to Grand Forks as well. And the load after that should be over to the Kootenays uh, in uh, Salmo, uh, loading at Porcupine to uh, Abbotsford. So, I stopped and talked to CVSE. Needed an question. I needed a question answered. Um, last week, when we were going over the Coquihalla, after the video, I was listening to the radio, and 
talking to the chatter and there was a great debate going on. British Columbia now has speed limiters that limit the speed of this truck to 105 kilometers an hour. But the posted speed limit is 120 on the Coquihalla. So my truck has a speed limiter. We're not breaking any laws there. Going down a hill, at the bottom of the hill, can I let the truck get up to 120 kilometers an hour and use up momentum to go up the hill on the other side? Dude, they're pretty wide. I'm pretty sure they need uh, beacon lights on for that width. I could be wrong. So, I talked to CVSE and he just goes, I have not been asked that question before. He just goes, so this, you're limited to 105, so you can't go faster than that. I'm like, yes, we are limited to 105, but the brakes don't apply at 105. Our, our throttle just stops working at 105. That's what the speed limiter law is. Our, our brakes don't automatically apply. So, where does it say we can't do 120 down the hill and up the other side? And he goes, well, before you ask the question, the answer was I would give you a ticket for doing anything over 105, but now that you've asked the question, he spent 10 minutes reading over the laws, making a phone call, reading more laws, and then he goes, you know what? I wouldn't give you a ticket for going down the mountain at 120. I would give you a ticket for doing anything over 105 up the mountain or anywhere on the flat. I would give you a speeding ticket and a non-speed limiter ticket. But he goes, reading the laws until they post a speed limit sign on Coquihalla that says truck speed limit 100 kilometers an hour even though that's what the new speed limiter law is supposed to do, the way it's written, it's not enforceable. He goes, if anyone gives you a ticket for that, uh, the judge would throw it out. Having said that, I don't need to go faster than 105, so I'm, I'm okay. I'll just do 105, let the other people fight it out in court. They may clarify that law in the future. So this, this is as of May 27th, 2024. So it may have been updated since then. But it was interesting not even CVSE knew the answer to that. I mean, there's a limited amount of highways where that matters. Like here, the speed limit's 100. We're not gonna do 110 down the mountain. Um, it'll only apply to, I only know of three places. Highway 5 between Hope and Kamloops. Uh, Highway 97C between Peachland and Merritt. Highway 97, somewhere between Cash Creek and Williams Lake. There's a 110 kilometer section.
maybe if I go through the Hope or go through Hope and Hunter Creek or Laidlaw Scaler open and I have time, I might go talk to those officers. Or the Kamloops scale, I might talk to those officers, see what their interpretation of the law is. That'd be interesting to know. Yeah, 14 degrees Celsius today. Cloudy day. Cloudy but nice day. Hopefully my trailers are ready by the end of the week. Clouds actually look kind of stormy, don't they? Looks like somebody else locked up their brakes there. So yeah, the boss has been just running local runs over here. That's why two videos of the same same route. Like, luckily, there's enough driving that I can get two videos worth out of this trip. But uh, he, he just wanted me to run local while we keep figuring out these trailers, make sure nothing else breaks on them. So yeah, we got that air, air leak issue. We've got a tire that is close to out of service. It's at 5.30 seconds, so there's still not a 2.30 second left. <clears throat> and there is one hub that is low on oil that must be leaking somewhere. But I'll keep, I'll keep touching all the hubs touching all the tires, making sure everything's going in these old trailers. But uh, they ride nice. They also feel less heavy now that I turn the um, uh, tire max air system off. So the brakes must have just barely been dragging. Not enough to heat up the hub, but enough to to drag just ever so slightly. Or I'm just used to the trailers already. We'll see when I switch back to mine if all of a sudden they feel lighter again. Well, problem running this route is fuel stations. I'm gonna have to detour. Hey, there's some cows down there. Oh, that's moose. There's two moose down there. Sweet. Two moose. Jess is going to be so jealous. I don't know if you guys can see them. Two moose. It was like weird to be cows over here. I've never seen cows here before. Oh yeah, they're not. Um, that was kind of cool. I hope I hope uh, the video caught them. Oh yeah, yeah, right, fuel. Um, the only fuel station is south of Castlegar, 
So I'll have to, after loading this load, I'll have to go south of Castlegar and fuel up. Because we're below half a tank now. And I can probably make it over to Porcupine tomorrow without fueling up, but I like to fuel up once a day. At the end of the day, fuel up once. You never really need to. You, you don't, it's not enough to you need a full tank. Unless I'm really tight on a timeline, I know I can make it to the next customer if I don't fuel up. I'll fuel up once a night, once a day. I try to do it at the end of the shift, the last, the last fuel station of the day. Unfortunately, I don't get paid for that. Basically, from Highway 3, you have to go through Castle Guard to the south end, fuel up, and then come back up. Those miles I don't get paid for. So truck drivers have to do free work. Anywhere I take a detour that detour is longer than the shortest route, I don't get paid to take the longer route. I, I get paid the shortest miles. Shortest trucking route miles. They're not going to take tiny little detours, but if those tiny detours are just a little bit shorter, nope, they'll take, they'll take the main roads. Which isn't a big deal here in BC, there's only so many routes you can take, but if you're traveling the interstate system in the U.S. and going long distances and your boss is doing the shortest route, which means all these little back roads to make the, to make it the shortest route. It can be a significant difference in your pay. Not really a problem I have. problem I always had uh, with dispatch when we were crossing the border to the US is they would plan out the route but they would take the most convenient border crossing it's like yeah but trucks aren't allowed to cross there I have to go here this is where your paperwork says I have to cross so you make sure I pay get paid for those miles. They got a lot better at it after a while, but I know a couple times I gotta go, hey, hang on, uh, hang on, hang on. You paid me how many miles for this trip? You made me detour two hours around to this border because that's the only border I could bring that load across. I want to get paid for those two extra hours. And they never had a problem paying for those. And said, Sorry, honest mistake. We'll fix it. That makes you always wonder, is it an honest mistake or do they just pay you because you call them out on it? 
What about the drivers that don't actually check their payday? Brake check. Right, stay further out over here because that van almost followed us in thinking it's a lane. So many people are confused by this. It's not a lane. It's a spot for us to get out and safely check our brakes. Don't come flying past us at a full speed limit. Dude ahead of us made a lickety split fast brake check. It was a legal brake check. A legal requirement for a brake check is to stop and mark it in your logbook. You do not have to get out of your truck. Although I highly recommend you do get out of your truck. Do a quick check to make sure there's all your lights work, your tires are good, your brakes are good. There's a scale at the bottom of the hill. You may, maybe you don't want to go through the scale with lights burnt out or a flat tire. Now, if you know your trailers inside and out. All right, you don't have to check your brakes every time. Like you don't make sure your 90s are good, but you don't have to check your brake pads and all that stuff. It, you know where those are. Now when you have a truck like this or a trailer like this that I have no idea where anything is, you've got to do a nice long pre-trip. Find out what what issues are on the truck and trailer. Not truck, I know the truck. But what issues are on the trailer? No, he did a fast brake check, but he's going down the hill slowly, so. Ah, he's exiting. That makes sense. Welcome to Castlegar. See if the scale's open. See the airport in the background? I don't know if you guys can see that straight line in the background. That's the airport. That's the airstrip. Nicknamed the Castlegar because flights flights uh, cancel at this airport quite often cancel their approach or do a go around regularly. It's, it's a fairly gnarly airport to come into. Mountains on both ends. So you, you can't, you gotta like sidestep in, into the runway. You can't, you gotta turn into the runway. You can't approach it dead on from far away.
wondering how they're going to handle the merge, if they're going to speed up or slow down. They went with a slow down option. Vehicles over 5,500 kilograms report to scale. Oh, I think I told someone it was 10,000. It's 5,500. And it is closed. Coolio saved me a few minutes. Columbia River. Not quite as big as it is down south in the US of A. corner just keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter so you gotta keep slowing down the jack isn't bad you just take your foot off the throttle and coast in Still need my manifest for this load. I've only been verbally told I have to come here and load. I haven't actually received my manifest. Well, maybe, maybe the email hasn't. Maybe the email got sent while we're over the Paulton, but I didn't have it before that. So, brilliant suspension bridge. This is the Kootenai River flows into the Columbia River. And just down the river from Brilliant Suspension Bridge is Brilliant Dam. overflowing it too. It's always spectacular when it's overflowing. Pull into that little pull out there and get a good viewpoint of the dam. Hey, if I have some time someday I might, might just have to do that. just a little way down there's a rest area here and at the rest area there's actually one of the old turbines that gets used in Brilliant Dam. I guess they get replaced every so often. the rest. 
rest area. Turbine sitting right there. Huh. That was a Sutco truck pulling a Super B. I thought Sutco doesn't own Super or doesn't run Super Bs anymore. I guess they may still take the occasional job, huh? Seeing they still have the trailers and they've got truck drivers that are doing uh, wood chips. If there's all of a sudden a lull in wood chips, they can still do some flat deck runs. Just like last week. Yeah, last week, I, my buddy Rano, right? So he was running flat deck. He normally does wood chips. So they asked him to do flat deck work last week. Thrums Road. So this is the town of Thrums, or the community of Thrums. I guess it's not even, it's more like a village. There's a Sutko uh, chip truck. I forget how beautiful this place is too. I just drive it so often I forget to look and see the little ponds and the lily pads and the green grass and flowers and rivers, little islands in the river. It just, it's a magical place. If you guys are traveling through British Columbia Highway 3, I highly recommend taking a detour of Highway 3A. Um, I would say go from Castlegar up to Nelson and then take the ferry to go down to Creston. Yeah, a little scenic detour, but well worth it. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful road. If you take Highway 3, it's just mountain top where you just go up and down up and down and the road's a lot more boring here you kind of zigzag all over the place and see more scenery it's longer but less boring and 
Easier on your vehicle, too. Going over Bombay Pass and Kootenai Pass is, is not, not, not that easy on vehicles. Here we go. Kolesnikov Lumber. Bit of a confusing place to come into if it's your first time. There's a sign up there that says chipping department this way. But first time coming in, it's like, do I stop? Do I go to the front office? Do I? No, don't go to the front office. Just come down this way. Stop, make sure there's no traffic back there. Stop over here, make sure, really make sure there's no forklifts. Pull ahead to where that truck is in front of us. But if there's a truck there, I guess I just have to stop right here. Far enough ahead so I'm not blocking traffic behind us and not far enough that the forklift can still go in front of us back and forth. Otherwise you'd pull over to where that truck is stopped up there and there's a stop sign and you just wait for the forklift to come and get you there. That's it. I am out of here. You guys absolutely rock. <laughs>